everyone, it's me again, back to react to something. It's not music this time. Um, I'm actually going to do a reaction to something I thought we might be interesting to people. Uh, people like I, would, I said, I do reactions to a lot of Argentinian music, and some people say, "Oh, you don't know this history, or this is from uh, you know a period in time when this was happening," kind of thing. And like, I, I'm quite an inquisitive kind of chap, and I, I like to sort of I like to learn. I, I sometimes sometimes go on a little bit of a uh, of a like I'll find out one thing and then I'll end up chasing it down and reading more about it kind of thing. Like Wikipedia, I'm on Wikipedia, go from one page to another, re reading up on stuff. I don't always remember it, but I think a little nugget of it maybe stays in my brain. It's like when I do my podcast, I do my heavy metal podcast, and once a month I do a themed show. And I do themes about all different kinds of uh, subjects, and so I like to read up on the stuff that I'm talking about. So, for example, I might do a, a theme about hell, for example, and I'll go through, like, reading about Greek mythology, about Hades, uh, you know, mythology is something I'm quite interested in. And, uh, you know, all kinds of subjects I've done, you know, stuff about colours, I've done stuff about colours, stuff, stuff about numbers. It's just whatever, like, uh, I did one for the, the months of the year and got some of the information about the different months, of, just anything like that, really. And I just thought it'd be cool to check out some Argentinian history. Um, yeah, so I've got this video that I downloaded, uh, Argentina Animated History in Five Minutes. All right, it's not a very long video, so it hopefully won't be too boring for you to watch me watching it. But um, yeah, I thought I'd give it a try. And if there's any other, if, if, if you enjoyed it, I might go further, maybe get a little bit more in depth kind of stuff. Like a five minute history is not really gonna, not really gonna cut it, is it? But uh, you know, if, if you guys like this kind of thing, and I might, and you can want to suggest some more videos to me about history or anything really, then uh, get in touch because um, so I'm trying to grow the channel, trying to get videos I can react to without getting copyright strikes. Uh, most of the music I react to, is, uh, it belongs to the people though, whose music it is. I can still do them, as long as I don't get a copyright, um, there's like there's copyright, two different, levels, two different levels of copyright. And some of them just say, oh, it's okay for you to have this on your channel, but the advert revenue will go to the artist, which is fair enough. I don't want to get anywhere it's like, you're barred for using this song, you know? It can happen if you're not careful. So so I am trying to find some stuff that I can react to as well as the music. So let's just, let's just go with this. I've, I've already spoke too much. <laughs> let's go, Argentina animated history in five minutes. Let's see. Uh, is a country of South America, covering most of the southern portion of the continent. Throughout its history, Argentina has been a nation of immense potential and promise. It ranks as one of South America's largest economies. Welcome to our animated history channel. This episode presents a brief history of Argentina. The earliest traces of human life in the area, now known as Argentina, are dated from the Paleolithic period, with further traces in the Mesolithic and Neolithic. However, large areas were apparently depopulated during an extensive dry period between 4000 and 2000 BC. In the late 15th century, the native tribes of Quebrada de Humahuaca were conquered by the Inca Empire under Topa Inca Yupanqui to secure the supply of metals such as silver, zinc, and copper. The Incan domination of the area lasted for about half a century and ended with the arrival of the Spanish. Europeans first arrived in the region with the 1502 voyage of Amerigo Vespucci. The Spanish navigators Juan Díaz de Solis and Sebastián Cabot visited the territory in later decades. The Spanish raised the status of this region by establishing the Viceroyalty of the Rio de la Plata in 1776. This Viceroyalty consisted of today's Argentina, Uruguay, and Paraguay, as well as much of present-day Bolivia. The Viceroyalty was short-lived due to lack of internal cohesion among its many regions and lack of Spanish support. The British tried to invade Buenos Aires and Montevideo in 1806 and 1807, but were defeated Sorry. both times by Santiago de Liniers. The beginning of the Peninsular War in Spain and the capture of the Spanish King Ferdinand VII created great concern England and Spain have had a long history of war with each other. We've always been warm with each other, like all through history. I think the longest, um, um, I think England and Portugal have had like a, um, a truce for years. They've always been, Portugal and, and England have been you know, friends for, for centuries. Like not have been at war with each other, always been allies of each other, sort of going back for, you know, decades, not decades, uh, centuries. And uh, but Spain, England and Spain, mm. <laughs> I think it's because both countries were, were very uh, naval, weren't they? They had big, big navies and they sent explorers out and they tried to claim lands for themselves. Obviously, Spain uh, had a massive empire in South America and 
I sure other parts of the world. Uh, yeah, England, we certainly had our fair share of empire building uh, <laughs> over the years. But I didn't know about wars. They had some wars in Buenos Aires. We tried to take Buenos Aires. And another another place was it? Uh, not something I was familiar with, but it wouldn't surprise me at all. You know, <laughs> uh, just England and Spain having fights for no, you know, just over land and, and money and, you know, goods. Uh, all around the vice royalty. A new successful attempt, the May Revolution of 1810, took place. The vice royalty was also renamed and it nominally became the United Provinces of the Rio de la Plata. Revolutionaries split into two antagonist groups, the Centralists and the Federalists, a move that would define Argentina's first decades of independence. On the 9th of July, 1816, the Congress of Tucumán formalized the Declaration of Independence, which is now celebrated as Independence Day. The 1820 Battle of Cepeda, fought between the Centralists and the Federalists, resulted in the end of the Supreme Director rule. Bernardino Rivadavia. Oh, it's going a bit fast now. So, right, so 1816, was it? They got independence. That's the Argentinian Independence Day. And of course, yeah, there's always going to be factions. And rather than um, sort of, uh, you know, diplomacy and... Uh, you know, trying to sort things out in an amicable fashion. Of course, there has to be war because that's humans for you. You know, human beings uh, can't live in can't live in peace, can we? It's like always an excuse to to be fighting and killing each other. It's uh, uh, never mind. You know, I miss this guy's name. It's rather a long name. Was appointed as the first president of the country. However, okay. the interior provinces soon rose against him, forced his resignation, and discarded the constitution. In 1835, Ooh. General Juan Manuel de Rosas became dictator of Argentina. He was a federalist, but he introduced a strong central government. A rebellion later removed him from power. Urquiza immediately wow. began the task of national organization. He became provisional director of the Argentine Confederation in May 1852. Until the late 19th century, the natives of southern Argentina lived in their traditional way. However, General Julio Rica led an army to conquer them. Driven by this immigration wave and decreasing mortality, the Argentine population boomed and the economy grew dramatically. Its railway mileage rose from 500 to 30,000 kilometers. G All right, lots of growth there, lots of growth. Uh, growth in population, growth in transport network. Uh, it seems like uh, some of the leaders were a bit... Uh, you know, he said there was a dictator there and there was they, there's some insurrection. Uh, the first prim prime minister was... Um, uh, also, president was dispo deposed. Um, hmm, okay, forced to quit. Uh, the constitution was um, disregarded. They say was that because the first constitution was no good, or I'm not sure the difference between the centralists and the uh, I can't remember what the other ones were called now. This is a lot to take in. <laughs> but yeah, it's yeah, it's kind of I suppose it must be typical of most countries. There's always war and you know, battle and it's just human nature, unfortunately. GDP grew so fast that despite the huge immigration influx, in 1865, Argentina was already one of the top 25 nations by per capita income. Between 1878 and 1884, the so-called conquest of the desert and Chaco occurred. The first conquest consisted of a series of military incursions into the Pampa and Patagonian territories, dominated by the indigenous peoples. The conquest of Chaco lasted up to fines of the century, since its full ownership of the national economic system only took place when the mere extraction of wood and tannin was replaced by the production of cotton. In 1916, Hipólito Irigoyen, leader of the Radical Civic Union, won the election. He enacted social and economic reforms and extended assistance to small farms and businesses. Argentina stayed neutral during World War I. The second administration of Irigoyen faced an economic crisis, precipitated by the Great Depression. In 1930, Irigoyen was ousted from power by the military led by José Félix Uriburu, although our... Well, yeah, another person ousted. It uh, seems quite, uh, quite a, I want to say a popular thing, but it's something that's happened historically there a couple of times. People in power have been forced out. Um, yes, uh, it's not never a good situation. Democracy, people, the people voting, you know, it's, uh, it's obviously a lot better than people just deciding they want to take charge. Uh, you might be able to do a better job or you think you can do a better job, but, you know, yeah, you, you hope there's not going to be 
continuations of that. You hope there'd be a democratic process and people get in their votes to vote for who they want to be in charge rather than someone deciding I want to be in charge and taking it over. Because, um, yeah, that's not great. Argentina remained among the 15 richest countries until the mid-century. This coup d'etat marks the start of the steady economic and social decline that pushed the country back into underdevelopment. Argentina also stayed neutral during World War II, a decision that had full British support but was rejected by the United States after the attack on Pearl Harbor. A new military okay. coup toppled the government, and Argentina declared war on the Axis powers a month before the end of World War II in Europe. After the 1943 coup, Juan Perón gradually you know, a bit late on that, on, the, on joining World War Two, But that's uh, interesting. I didn't know you were uh, neutral in both those wars. I tried to remain neutral. But then you had, you had another blinking person deposed there. It's like, wow. I mean, hopefully this political situation there is better now. I have heard people have mentioned about some of the, the hardships that um, the country has, has suffered. And um, it seems you went from being one of the top 15, like, affluent, uh, prosperous, developed countries to going into underdevelopment from, uh, I'm guessing from the way the country was run by this this person who took over. I'm losing track of the names. This one, who is this one? This is... Um, he emerged as leader. One Three years all. later, he was elected president. Okay. Perón introduced a number of welfare measures and nationalized industries. A revolution called the Revolution of Liberation forced Perón to flee abroad. In the uh, next few decades, Argentina was marked by frequent coup d'etat, low economic growth, and then high growth rates. Occurring between 1970s and the 1980s, the Dirty War involved state terrorism in Argentina and disappearance of thousands of people. Meanwhile, inflation continued to rage and Argentina became heavily indebted. President Raúl Alfonsín was unable to solve the problem of hyperinflation in Argentina. Alfonsín handed over power to the next elected president, Carlos Saúl Menem. During the well, it's good that he handed over power and he wasn't ousted uh, at gunpoint. That makes a change. But yeah, it sounds like, uh, yeah, I think most countries have problems of, you know, inflation and no country is that prosperous now. Even the countries you think are supposed to be prosperous, like America, have got like mass positive, positive poverty in, you know, a lot of their populace. It seems like you've got the people with the money, which is like a small, like a small amount of people with this much money. And then the rest of this amount of people have only got that much money. You know, it's, it's the disparity between the rich and the poor, which is kind of worldwide, really, which is like, uh, which is, yeah, it's probably why you have revolutions and stuff like that. People eventually have enough of it and they think they want to have more. It's just like human nature, I suppose, that we always want to have more and uh, aren't happy with life and our lot. And yeah, it's uh, understandable. Right, but we're nearly at the end now, so... In the 1990s, Menem managed to curb inflation and he privatized industry. Argentina okay. is a prominent regional power in the Southern Cone and Latin America, and retains its historic status as a middle power in international affairs. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel for new videos updated daily. Okay, that was, uh, well, five minutes. What did I expect in five minutes? <laughs> I got a very, very small kind of, like, uh, insight into the uh some of, some of the history uh yeah maybe i need to find some longer videos or if anyone could think of a longer video or maybe a, a a focused video on a certain era might be interesting i was expecting because one of the things that um people have mentioned in passing is uh is it peron's wife Avita? Avita? um yeah didn't she she took over for for a time but obviously i mean i don't know nothing all i know there was a there was a, a musical <laughs> and there was a song, a hit song in the 70s. It was called Don't Cry For Me, Argentina. I think they remade it. Or they, I think they made a film with Madonna, didn't they? They make a film with Madonna playing a veto at one point. I've not watched that, to be honest. It's like that kind of history kind of film is not something I, I prefer, like horror movies and sci-fi and fantasy. So I've, I must say I've never watched that movie. But um, I thought she had led the country maybe at some point, or was it just that she was um, uh, a much-treasured lady being the uh, the wife of the the president for a while, so there was that was that Juan Perón was it? But he was only there for three years before he was ousted. So maybe that period when he was in charge was a, considered a, a a good period. And so a lot of people have 
uh, fond memories and fondness for that for that part of the history. I'll have to maybe do a more re a more in depth video for that. If anyone can, anyone knows a link to a, a better in depth video for any of these periods, anything you think I should check out. But it seems like that what was that there was definitely that period. Lots of people were being disappeared. Yeah, that's um, a dictator, a tyrant by the sounds of it, but I've forgotten what his name was now. There were so many names just trying to remember there. They're not going to sink into my head because my head is mostly mostly marshmallow. It's um, it's not great at remembering things, but I, I try to. But, yeah, anyway, that, was, that was an interesting little look at the uh, – a very, very short history for Argentina there. But, um, yeah, maybe I'll do some more um, videos like that in the future. I'm also going to start a series. I've been talking, thinking about it for ages – like, I'm always getting comments, obviously, in Spanish, and I'm going to try and start going through this Learn Spanish Online series. Uh, I'll have a look at it, <laughs> see how it goes. Um, but we shall see. Anyway, uh, cheers for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, tell me about any bits of history maybe I could look further into, particularly with video links. That would be a lot ha more handy for me if you give me a video link that I can look at. Um, also, um, if you enjoyed, yeah, so enjoy it, thumbs up, comment, uh, share it with your friends if you want. Um, if you enjoyed the show, also, I've got a link down below. If you want to buy me a coffee, there's a link down below. You can make a donation if you like to, to buy me a coffee if you want. Or you can buy cups, uh, T-shirts with my face on it. The link down below as well. <laughs> Why you would want to, I don't know. But, you know, I've got to try. I've got to try. Um, anyway, cheers for watching this. And, uh, yeah. Hopefully uh, you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you again in another video soon, hopefully.